Hello, this is Gus from 3dplearner.com and today I want to talk to you about uh, machine learning software, deep learning software. Uh, so far we have been using Keras in the blog. You know the blog is targeted at people who do 3D animation, VFX and games. And in this context, we're, we use software that is, that is bound by Python 2.7. And that's the reason I chose Keras from the beginning. Keras is a great machine learning platform. It is easy to learn and you can use it as an abstraction layer to other uh, deep learning frameworks. But I feel like in some cases we're really hitting the ceiling with Keras. I find it a bit hard to implement uh, custom loss functions and more intricate training loops. And nowadays, in 2019, we have a very nice alternative to Keras, which is PyTorch. And in this video, I want to show you uh, what PyTorch is, what are the differences between Keras and PyTorch, because from now on, I intend to do all my tutorials using it. So I also have uh, created a blog post, you, which you can see here, to accompany this video, where I uh, go through all the details on how to install PyTorch and how to use it to reproduce one of the most popular articles in the blog, which is the FDDA uh, model. Okay, so here I have a notebook with, uh, with that model, the FDDA, uh, model fast and deep deformation approximations and this one was the original one implemented in Keras and I want to show you how both of these are not that different uh, how PyTorch it's it is a little bit harder to get into but not that much and in the next post I'll try to show you models that really display the power of PyTorch uh, with more cutting edge uh, machine learning models like GANs and so on. So if you've seen this, you probably remember we start loading the data, we do some feature normalization and all that. And finally, we start defining the model. So this was one of the first examples I came up with the in the blog. And I used the Keras sequential API, which is a very simple way to declare uh, neural networks. You just uh, add the layers one by one and they are automatic automatically connected one to the other. Then in Keras we would choose an optimizer and then we would compile our model using the optimizer and also the loss function. And here we're just declaring the loss function. Of course you can uh, have your own custom loss function but I really find the the API for custom loss functions in, in Keras is a little bit limiting. Still, you would compile the model and then you use uh, uh, the fit function to train it. Or if you want to create some sort of special custom training, you can use train on batch, which is another function. Then you train the model, you can uh, plot uh, the training data and so on. And then we would export it with uh, as an H5 model and would load this in Maya using Keras as well. Okay, so in PyTorch to train the same model, uh, you can see it, the code is very similar. We start loading the data, we can normalize it just as we would using NumPy. Uh, one uh, thing that is a little bit different we can't just throw NumPy arrays directly into, into PyTorch. We have to convert them into uh, tensors. So here I'm converting them to flow tensors. Okay, but uh, you can think of a tensor as exactly the same thing as uh, uh, NumPy's and the arrays. It is just the custom torch thing to do it. Okay. Here you can see in uh, PyTorch we have a sequential model just as we do in um, Keras to create very simple models. And you'll see right off the bat that we don't compile our model. We just create, uh, we can load an optimizer from a library of pre-implemented uh, optimizers and we can do the same for the loss function. 
but we don't compile the model. This is the greatest difference between Keras and PyTorch. In Keras or in any other uh, machine learning library like uh, TensorFlow or CNTK, we construct a, construct a computation graph, compile it, and then use the, the training function to feed it with data and update its weights. Here in PyTorch, we just use regular Python commands to uh, mess with these tensors, which is how we implement the training. And uh, PyTorch is able to automatically uh, transform that into a graph and backpropagate all uh, operations we can throw at it. So this makes it a lot more Pythonic and easier to implement, especially more complicated loss functions and training loops. And also it makes it a bit trickier because you have to implement some things by hand. So for example, instead of just calling a, a fit function like we do right here and give it the number of epochs and everything, we need to do this uh, a training loop by ourselves. So here I'm setting uh, to 200 epochs and then I do a, a loop like this for each epoch in epochs. And then I implement the training loop myself. So right here we are uh, zeroing out the gradients, which we need to do at, at each new epoch. Then we do a feed forward of the neural network. If you don't know what a feed forward is, please uh, check out my post on what are neural networks. So we just put the data through the model and get a prediction, a result. Then we calculate the loss using the loss function. So we get kind of like the difference between what we expected and what we actually got. And then we back prop propagate the gradients from there. So if you don't know what a, a back prop is also, please look at our introduction on neural networks. Uh, then the optimizer, uh, we step the optimizer, which is basically using that, uh, that va those values we got from the back propagation and adjusting the weights, uh, re respecting the learning rate we have set right here. So this is all a uh, training loop is in a neural network. It's very simple. You can use, declare it using these five lines. And of course, in CARES, we have some features that are not uh, expressed here. So you can make this as complex you, as you want. Also note that this loss function, uh, it is already, I, I use this MSC, which comes uh, implemented uh, from factory, but I could implement my own. So I'll just run this so you can see it running. I think it's, I'll just create the model again and train it. Okay. So you can see it starts with a loss of one and go down to a very, very, very low number. Okay, so you can see this is a, a factory loss function, but I could implement the same function. So this is the mean squared error. So the error is the prediction minus the expected value. We squared that and get the mean. So the mean squared error. I mean, we can do like torch mean and do this. So I'm gonna load the model again and train it. You can see I get Pretty much the same results. Of course, uh, the network is uh, randomly initiated, so it will never be exactly the same, but you can see it's the, the same idea. So any uh, Pythonic operation we can throw at here, the uh, backward operation can backpropagate uh, and we can train our network in that manner. So you can see it's very flexible and very easy to see what we're doing here. So <clears throat> I have uh, another version of this where I implement all the features we have in Keras. And these are, for example, the validation split. In Keras also the inputs are randomized at every new epoch. And then we have a, also a validation set and, and a train set. So right here, I have the same thing, but with a more uh, fully featured train loop and you can download this by, by going into the resources for this article. But <clears throat> basically I create a fit function. It has a validation split section. I, I shuffle the samples and then I do uh, the same feed forward and back propagation and then do a validation. 
Note that the validation, uh, in the validation, all I want to do is to, uh, to, to, to get a prediction, but I don't want to update network's weights. So I tell uh, PyTorch, I'm doing this uh, and I don't want those gradients to be calculated for this operation. So I do it with uh, Torch no grad and everything I do inside this indent right here uh, won't, uh, won't be bad, wouldn't be bad propagated if I had a back propagate uh, function after that. Uh, well, you can see the, the results right here. Uh, I get uh, better training because I'm shuffling my samples at every epoch. I get a validation set, which is uh, something everyone should have. And you can see how simple it would be, for example, to, to implement an early stopping right here. You could just get the validation from one epoch and see if it increases or decreases. And uh, you can quickly implement things because of this uh, Pythonic nature of PyTorch. Okay, what about Maya? So uh, previously we were training things in Keras and we would also load Keras inside Maya and export things as H5 files and then load them in Maya and run it that way. And I also showed you how to uh, export Keras models to Maya's C++ API and for that, we are converting first uh, Keras models to Onyx models and then loading Onyx models in Maya with C and TK uh, in the C++ API. In PyTorch, uh, since PyTorch is not compatible with Python 2.7, we can install it directly in Maya, but we can convert it to Onyx and then we can load this Onyx model both through the C++ API as well as through the Python a API. So I show you how to do all of this in this tutorial that I talked about in the site. And I think this is a very good way to, to do all my machine learning going forward. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, probably all tutorials now are gonna use this. So I recommend if you want to continue following the content I'm, I've been producing, try to, to follow this tutorial. And if you like what we're doing, please share our content in your social media, like us here on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much until next time.